Andy Reid, Andy Reid, thank you. Yeah, uh, kind of in, he's been there, so he knows the playbook. Uh, he's consistently considered one of the smartest guys in the world. Uh, but you're right, he, he needs to perform, and if he doesn't do that, I don't see a reason for him to be the backup, because uh, people are saying the Bears might be this year's Rams, this year's Eagles. If that's the case, if Trubisky gets hurt, we're not winning anything with Daniel, I don't think. And I was right. Uh-huh. And I'm, I was... I was very, I'm very, very impressed with what Tyler Bray was did. And I'm going to let, I'm going to, sorry for cutting you off there, but I'm going to let you finish what you were saying about Tyler Bray. Oh, yeah, no problem. And I was really impressed by him, too. You know, he spread the ball around. He was in six situations that he can get the receiver in stride. So, he, you know, uh, even if he, he was, like, a little behind the line, he was falling forward to get it. Uh, touched passes. He might have had one interception. Um, I think he did. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm not recalling what it was. I don't think it was like super egregious. I'm not sure Daniels who threw it at his lineman's head. Uh, so that stuff's unacceptable. Um, but Tyler Bray, he, he did look good. And, uh, you know, I'm really excited about Mitch Trubisky, so I haven't paid too much attention to the backup quarterback position. But, you know, uh, both Daniel and Bray have been, uh, getting, getting, Pretty decent reviews from training camp. So these these are the last two topics. Then we'll wrap this up, and I'll let you go on about your day. Um, Mitchell, I want to talk about Mitchell Trubisky and then the corner, the cornerback position because I forgot the name of the cornerback that you guys. It was a cornerback that's very very good, and he was about to go to the Packers because he was a restricted free agent. But you guys matched the offer. Um, what's his name? Hmm. Yeah, Kyle Fuller. I, I'm a, I'm a, I've been a big fan about Kyle Fuller. So, can you tell us more about what we can expect from the Bears' cornerback position? Well, and particularly Kyle Fuller, and then what the Chicago Bears' offense will look like, and what we should expect out of Mitchell Trubisky. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, just for a general speak for our, our cornerback we returned both of the starters from last year. Actually, it's a chunk of nickel, all three starters from last year. So you're right in specifically being excited about Fuller. He was the, I believe he was the most targeted wide receiver last year. And he was still a top 10 corner in the league. The biggest issue that uh, both Bears have with him is that he keeps his hands on a lot of balls. I think he's for like second and pass breakup. Yeah, and doesn't bring him in. Yeah, he doesn't bring him in. Right, we see him jump routes, and so if he could catch the balls, or even like you know thirty percent of what he puts his hands on, that's an eight interception, uh, seven eight interception for the season, and that's probably one of the, that's that might even lead the league uh, next year. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but he definitely has that potential. Plays off his wide receiver. You know, if you watch those games, he's a good ten yards back sometimes. So that way he can pick on the ball as soon as he sees the uh, quarterback throw it. He, he plays the quarterback and the receiver both really well, but he likes paying attention to the quarterback and the guy. And, and, as far as, uh, and, then, and another guy before you go to the offense and finish up about Kyle Fuller, what about Raquan Smith now? He's in a contract dispute. Um, he wants all his guarantees. The same thing Sam Donald basically says. If he gets suspended for something that happens on the field, he wants his guarantee because of the new hit rule and stuff. And what what are you guys most excited about with Raycon Smith? Oh, man, it's, it's sideline to sideline speed and coverage ability. Uh, I don't know. Uh, if you, I don't know if you watched many Bears games last year, but that's where we got exposed. Yeah, uh, you, you. We consistently let like, tight end like beat us, and I, it was our biggest deficit for the entire year. Now, mm-hmm. now he's a good player, but he has a problem with block shedding. He's very, very in the Oklahoma game in the Rose Bowl, Orlando Brown. Oklahoma was pulling Orlando Brown and making sure that Orlando Brown was matched up one-on-one with Raekwon Smith in a one-on-one situation. And he got dominated. He's not really that good of a blocker, good, that good of shedding blocks. So how do you guys think, what do you think, how would the Bears be able to work around him? What would they work on with him? Uh, so 
it's going to be it's going to be a challenger, right? Because that is a pretty big limitation of the game. However, we do have two monsters up front in Eddie Goldman and Akeem Biggs. Uh, Akeem Biggs is, in my opinion, one of the most under players in the league. Uh, he, he basically was our pass rush for the first half of last year. Uh, and those two big body guys that are going to command a double team, they're hopefully going to keep those blocks off rope one for most of the game. So obviously, if a, a new guard of a tackle gets his uh, hands on him, they get his hands on him, and he's probably out of that play. But he, uh, he can maneuver through traffic really well. And because he personally knows his limitations, at least what I've seen on film, he knows he has to go around a specific way, or, you know, he, he can't uh, have the lineman uh, get his hands on him. So he has to take a different, uh, he has to maybe shift his assignment so that if the run's going outside, he, like, has to use the interior gap as opposed to the exit gap. I'm not 100% technical with my football terms, but, like, you might have to go to the left side as opposed to the right side of the guard or tackle, so that way he can get the leverage he needs in order to make the play or at least allow someone else to make the play by occupying that block. It is an issue. Um, teams are going to try to exploit it, and because of there's no that, they're going to try and counter that. So it'll be a chess match, and I'm excited because Big uh, Banjo is one of the best in the game. So I'm not too worried about it on the station, and I think we're going to build around that in, in uh, draft coming up. So while he may not be the best player this year, I think he actually is the best rookie of the year. He may not. I think obviously probably won't, considering how many defense players were drafted. But with Vic Sangio as a defensive coordinator, it just feels that it's just going to work out. Now, the final final topic before I let you go, um, what do you expect from this Chicago Bears offense? Because the defense was the defense was pretty was pretty solid. Um, the offense, on the other hand, besides the John Fox had this run first mentality. He wanted to run it, run it, run it, run it through people's heads. And I guess you guys front office wanted a little bit of a change. So, what do you expect with this? Matt, Matt, Matt Nagy offense and Mr. Trubisky. What, what do you think the Bears season will be like? What would be you guys' record? Okay, so I'll start with the offense. You know, you've got Matt Nagy uh, coming over from Kansas City, but he also brought in uh, Mark Helfrich from Oregon. He was their offensive coordinator when Chip Kelly was there and then head coach. Um, so I'm expecting a lot of like. One pass option. No, I mean, like, I think the league average was like, I don't know the league average, but I think the league lead was like 30 or 13% RPO. I expect to see that um, because I feel like that's how she is going to succeed. It's actually higher than that. About um, 40% of teams ran RPOs, including the Patriots. So a lot higher. Yeah, yeah, so I, I was even wrong on that. Um, and the Bears were atrocious at it. They, like, they didn't try and scheme at all. So we were super predictable. There was an ongoing run, run, pass. Because on first and second down, John Fox would run. And then it was an obvious passing down. They would try and pass. This should just get all the pressure in the world in his face. And he did his staff suffered accordingly. I think he's going to take a big step forward. I don't know if it's going to be Goff esque, but I do think it's going to happen. And uh, uh, so you're going to see a lot of movement pre snap, and you're going to see a lot of trick play. Now it's super tricky, but like scheme wise, to get like players like Taylor Gabriel and Tariq Cohen to be decoys because of their shiftiness and speed. So that way they can. You know, open up routes for Allen Robinson or Trey Burton or someone like that. Some of our big key free signings. I honestly expect this team to go no lower than in a, in a tough NFC. I think this team's floor is seven and nine. I genuinely think we can get to eleven and five. Okay, so it was great from here from you, Adam. Um, we're looking forward to having. Um, will you be available next week around this time? Uh, I don't know about around this time exactly, but uh, I should be available sometime next week for an update, absolutely. Okay, so thanks for coming on. We're looking forward to hearing you soon. And uh, no problem, Jordan. You have yourself a great day. You too. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me on. Okay.